Um, I have my quarantine beard here right now. Uh, you know, I haven't shaved since it started. Um, don't know when that's going to happen, but, you know, I'm just trying to let it ride out. I also uh, don't have a haircut, so I look a little grizzly. I look a little crazy. Forgive me. We're all going through a tough time right now. I've got my tea. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is just... Uh, Bear with me because this is my first like time doing this by myself like this and it's not easy. But, um, you know, I just have things that I wanted to talk about. I love this form of a podcast. I love the ability to express your opinions and your ideas and your thoughts uh, creatively and, uh, you know, voice them how you want to voice them and have people listen to them and and receive any message or or thoughts that you might have you know i've studied podcasts i watch podcasts um i've been a fan of this platform for a very long time so i feel like it's only right for me joe vibin from the internet and me malcolm bats in real life to uh participate in such a festive you know sort of situation <laughs> um so I have, you know, things that I pulled up here and, you know, I have, you know, I'm really structured right now. Like, this is my first episode, so I feel like I'm really going to be heavily structured. But as the time goes on and I get more comfortable with my setting, um, I feel like I'm going to, you know, not be as, like, scripted or by the book. I'm not scripted at all, by the way. I don't have a script. I just really have, like, notes and bullet points that i want to hit that i want to touch on so i have them pulled up right next to me but um uh you know just in general life uh during the quarantine has been um very interesting it's very it's been a very interesting like study of humanity i feel like uh we'll definitely look back at this era um this time period like, you know, years from now when kids are, you know, when this is in the history books and we're long gone, kids are going to be like, wow, like, this was crazy. What happened in 2020 was really crazy. Their lives were shit. It's a lot better now. You only hope that they can say that. <laughs> but hopefully, um, you know, times are a lot better in the future when my kids are growing up and their kids are growing up and so on and so forth. Um, uh. Let me know, by the way, if you guys like this color. I like this color of the light in the back, um, you know, but we could change that up. So just let me know for the next episode. I'll probably just change it next episode. Keep it, you know, keep it spicy, depending on the mood of the of the situation. But, um, yeah, so um, we're at the point now where, like, uh, uh, businesses and establishments, all the essential businesses and establishments that are still open are not letting people in without a mask. They actually have signs that say, if you do not have a mask, you cannot enter. No mask, no service. Um, so I went to Dunkin' Donuts um, a couple days ago just to get uh, breakfast, right? And I got a vanilla chai and, um, and a bacon, egg, and cheese on a croissant because that's my typical Dunkin' Donuts breakfast, right? So I go there, I pull up. I get out the car and I walk up to the door and there's a couple people outside and then um, I walk to the door and it says no mask, no service, right? And then I see a person inside like, you know, the Duncan like waving at me or whatever, like, you know, I have to like wear a mask or whatever, like whatever. So, uh, you know, me being the Aquarius that I am. I'm obviously not prepared for the situation. So I don't have my mask with me. So I have to drive back home, get the mask, put it on. Then I go back to Dunkin' Donuts, right? And I get in there and then, uh, you know, they have us, uh, you know, six feet apart, mind you. Like, um, they're putting, they put down hash marks in the Dunkin' Donuts, periodically for where people should stand at and there's only four hash marks only four people was allowed in Duggan at a time so when i get inside i'm at the door and there's like a hash mark six feet ahead of me then there's another hash mark adjacent to that like uh going towards the register another six feet ahead or whatever so um yeah 
And there was only one person working in the Dunkin' Donuts that day. There was just a little, you know, old guy or whatever. So he was by himself. So it took a long time for me to get my order, man. I was in Dunkin' for like 40 minutes. Legit. Craziest Dunkin' Donuts experience of my life. And, uh, yeah. But it was good once I got it. But it was just crazy how things are now. Like, you know, you really can't move around the way you want to um, as you shouldn't because, you know, I want this stuff to end. So whatever I have to do, I'm not somebody who's outside constantly. I'm in the house 24-7. That's me normally. If this wasn't going on, I'd be in the house 24-7. I don't go anywhere. Um, I go to work, uh, go to the studio, you know, and I'm home. That's basically my routine. Um, I go to the gym, play basketball, but I don't really go out. I'm not a party sort of guy, more of a homebody. I'm not out on the, out on the scene, seeing what's hot in the streets or whatever the kids are up to these days. You know, I'm a chill guy. I'm just in the crib watching a movie or you know whatever the case is or writing some stuff so but um i have been playing video games lately i've really like tapped into my video game um you know uh what is it called uh i guess i've just you know starting to relive my childhood a little bit playing video games um because you know i went through a time period where uh i wasn't playing video games that much you know i was doing a lot of other things but this quarantine has really put that back into my life. And I got to say, it was the best thing that's happened because it's uh, video games are necessary. Um, obviously, I'm a millennial. I'm 26 years old. So uh, I grew up playing video games. I grew up with a Nintendo controller in my hand, essentially. Um, you know, I had the N64. Well, my sis, my older sister had the N64 and, you know, I played it with her. And I had the PlayStation 1, I had the PlayStation 2, I had the Xbox One, I had the Xbox 360. And and I stopped right there for a long time. I didn't play video games after that. But then a few years ago, um, I bought myself a PlayStation 4 for Black Friday. Because it was about like, uh, it was like $150 or $200. You know, it was a great Black Friday deal. Typically, PlayStation costs what, like four or five hundred dollars at that time so it was like two hundred dollars so i was like okay i'm gonna get a playstation so me and actually two of my friends we all went and got playstation 4s this is like this was probably like two three years after the playstation 4 came out so it was still real hot on the street so i bought it and that was the best decision i ever made and i started playing it again and um i was playing games like 2k and gta um, you know, NBA 2K and um, Grand Theft Auto. And uh, I was having a great time. I stopped playing 2K because uh, that's a whole nother episode. But 2K is a scam. That whole game is a scam. You have to spend... I know people who have spent like close to $2,000 on 2K. Um, you know, just building their my player and their team and everything. And, you know, uh, the game itself costs $60. But you end up spending so much on that game so that game is a scam i don't play that anymore i deleted it from my system it's not even in my storage but um grand theft auto has been real fun i play that with my friends um but i stopped playing for a long time but i recently got back into playing since the quarantine i downloaded um uncharted which uh uncharted 4 which is a great it's sort of action and adventure game for the PlayStation, but the online multiplayer portion, because uh, I don't care about the story mode typically. Most games, I do not play the story mode. I skip right to the online multiplayer facet of it because that's the funnest part to me. Just um, the camaraderie of playing a multiplayer game with your friends and everybody just, you know, having a good time and just laughing on the headset. My bad, man. I'm fucking up. But it, br it brings me back to like when I was a kid. And, um, you know, when you're a kid and you're playing video games, uh, the only way, well, when I was growing up anyway, you know, the only way that we was able to play with your friends is if your friend was literally 
at your house physically and you guys uh played together you know because back in the day you didn't have uh the online capabilities that you do now on video games you know when i was playing playstation 2 and you know the only way i was playing with somebody is if they was physically at my house and we had two controllers and we plugged them both in ready to play kids today don't know about that controllers wasn't even wireless at that time so um yeah so online the online capabilities today just remind me of like back in the day when you used to do that sort of stuff and just play with your friends and have a good time the only way that we was able to play with four people at one time was if you had a multi-tap adapter and that was like a uh, a multiple um a multiple uh, controller slot thing that you plug in and then it has like about six slots that you could plug in multiple controllers and then you have mad people over and y'all playing um you know and now when you play online you can play with like everybody that you know in the whole world basically you can have like eight ten people with you in one game and you know um i enjoy that a lot i enjoy that so I've been playing that. I've been laughing, having a good time. I actually made a gaming channel just to post clips of games and and really just to just to um, record our audio because we talk shit and we have fun and we just be laughing, and having a good time on the game. And I feel like it creates escapism for people. That's what video games are really here for. Um, it's escapism. It's fun. Um, but it's also escapism from the real life, real world situations, just like, uh, how movies are escapism for people, um, going through day to day things. And then, you know, you watch, uh, you know, a movie for a couple hours just to get your mind off of work or just real life. Your girlfriend left you, your guy is cheating, whatever the case is. So I feel like. We need that to stimulate our brains, you know? We need some form of escapism or just uh, something to fuel your imagination because, like, when you're an adult, the imagination that you had as a kid sort of disappears. It, it's suppressed in the back of your head because real shit starts happening and you, uh, you know, realism just hits you in the face and you stop thinking about imaginary shit and start thinking about start stressing about oh my god i need to pay this i need to do this i need to do that but when you're a kid you know generally you know everything is just imagination every day is just like you know play time and like the world only exists right here where you're at and there's no stakes no consequences you know um but you know as you get older and you start to realize that oh shit there's more people in the world it's not just me and you start to realize things happen to people and life is hard you know you stop your imagination just gets suppressed but i just feel like playing video games watching movies um drawing making music these are all creative outlets that help with escapism that so you don't have to you know really think about the real shit that you've been doing you know that that's going on in your life and you can really resort back to being a kid and you know, because who wouldn't want to be a kid right now? I would trade places with a three-year-old child right now and live life over again. I wish I could be three years old. I hate when kids, uh, you know, want to grow up so fast and want to, like, be grown and do adult shit. Like, fuck adults. We're whack. We're lame. We don't have nothing going on. We're old. We slow. You know, like, being an adult it sucks man but like you know that's the reality you know everybody grows up eventually but i'm just saying for the kids out there um you know who want to grow up so fast please do not grow up fast you are an adult for longer than you're a kid you know being when you're a kid that's subjective like where, where does where does your childhood end subjectively speaking i would say you know being a little kid is is over by like maybe 13 years old you know right it's around the time when you're supposed to hit puberty but being a a child you know is really you know it's over at like 18 when you're legally an adult i feel like being a kid is only roughly 20 years of your life being an adult if you're fortunate to live maybe 80 years 
90 years. Being an adult is 60 to 70 years of your life. You know, why would you want to rush something that's going to last for 60 to 70 years? What, why would you want to rush out of something that's only going to be a, a quarter of your life? It's just going to be a small portion, a very fun portion of your life. Your childhood. You don't get that back. You don't relive it. You don't do anything else with it. Once it's gone, it's gone. You can't, you can't even pretend like it's back. Nobody is going to act like you're a kid when you're uh, 39 years old. So that's gone. So, you know, for all the kids out there, man, just, uh, you know, enjoy your life. Enjoy being young. Enjoy having fun. Enjoy not paying bills. That's really what it comes down to. Um, another thing, too. Uh, I'm still waiting on this stimulus check, man. Um, hopefully, I'll receive the check by the time this video comes out. But I'm still waiting on this stimulus check. It's really crazy to me, though, how... Um, People downplay $1,200. Like, I mean, I'm not saying $1,200 is a lot of money. In the grand scheme of things, we understand as adults $1,200 is not a lot of money. But, and it's not it's not free. It's not free either. You, you technically worked for it. It's technically your taxpayer dollars that they're, you know, basically giving you early. Because this is really like part of your 2021 tax return something like that um but it's your money essentially so it's not free but um it's basically like a loan you know in a sense but um even if that's the case man like it's money okay if i was walking down the street and well it's gonna be the quarantine so i can't walk down the street but if i was walking <laughs> if i was walking in my house and I found $20 on the floor, I would pick it up and be like, damn, somebody dropped their money. But if I was outside and I seen $20 on the floor, I'd be like, wow, I just got a payday. I'd be, that, that would make my day. Like, finding a random $20 bill on the floor, who's not going to be happy about that? Please let me know if you wouldn't be happy about that. So, in the same sense, you're being gifted a random twelve hundred dollars, you know, uh, you know, it's not free. It's but it's random. You know, you didn't do anything for it in the immediate in the in the in the immediate time that you received it. So I don't understand why people are trying to downplay uh, money at the end of the day. It's money like you're going to complain about money like that's like if somebody had an asthma attack. Right. And they were gasping for air. They couldn't breathe. Right. And then uh, a, a quick, swift breath of air just hits them in their uh, hits them in their esophagus and their lung pipes. Right. And all of a sudden they caught that breath and they can breathe for a second. They're not going to sit there and complain that it was only one little breath. No, they're going to try to <gasps> hold on to that little breath. And they're and they they're they're happy that they got to breathe for a second, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so it's just crazy to me how like people can downplay money. Stop it, man. Stop it. Just stop it. But anyway, um, I'm gonna get out of that because you know, uh, there's other things. There's more pressing matters to attend to, and uh. You know, one of those things is uh, something that's really positive that came out of this whole quarantine situation has been celebrities on Instagram Live, which is the, I feel like it's one of the greatest things that have happened in this quarantine. Probably the greatest thing that has happened in this quarantine as far as entertainment goes. Celebrities on um Instagram Live using their platforms for the right reasons. You've got so many celebrities who you didn't know are really cool on live together, which is crazy. Like from NBA players, like I seen Chris Paul and Steph Curry on live together. Now I know NBA players are all like friends for real, for real. They have a little secret brotherhood or fraternity. Like yeah, we getting money and we laughing. But like honestly, it's just crazy to me how I you know. 
because Chris Paul and Steph Curry are, have been rivals for a long time. So there's certain people that you still don't think, even though they're all cool, but there's certain people that you don't think they're not that cool, though. But I guess I was wrong. Steph Curry and Chris Paul was on there together. Um, I think, could you have uh, T-Pain and Lil Jon, um, you know, going hit for hit, song for song, you know, on Instagram Live. And it was just, uh, it was fascinating to see, like, wow, I didn't know they wrote that song. I didn't know this person wrote this song. Um, you know, it gives you a perspective as to how much work those guys have done. And, like, you know, it was just you know, in all good, in good spirits, and I enjoy seeing stuff like that, you know, I enjoy, I don't know, I'm weird, I like seeing people interact with other people, you know, I study, I I, I almost like secretly study people to myself, which sounds weird, but like, I study how people interact with other people, and like, how they feel about other people and like celebrities especially like i feel like it's just so interesting to see what celebrities like how celebrities are as people and how they really interact with each other you know i'm also big into astrology so um i've i've gotten big into astrology over the last few years so you know i also look at that look at people's signs and like oh this person they act like, you know, they talk to each other and, like, they would vibe with, they would vibe with each other because they're both this and, you know, just shit like that, man. Um, I enjoy seeing it, though. Uh, you also, we also have uh, Tory Lanez who has been doing um, the quarantine and radio thing and, you know, he's been, he's, he's had, I seen, like, a list on Twitter and it was, like, uh, all the people that Tory Lanez had on his Instagram live with him. And it was like a list of like 20 people, yo. And this was like, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't know why my voice cracked like that. But this was like uh, at the beginning when it first started. Like, you know, um, he had Chris Brown. Um, the list the list was extensive, you know. It was a bunch of people on the list. I can't, I don't remember all the names. But obviously you know uh he's been having re a lot of fun with it he's been doing it the right way he's probably the uh quarantine mvp as far as entertainment goes because he's been giving people a lot there's other guys that have been doing a lot on there too boozy little boozy was doing his thing he's had people on there um but diddy on easter um was doing like a fundraiser like a dance-a-thon i guess or a, a fundraiser um where he had uh, a lot of different people on his live sort of dancing, all his celebrity friends. And it was in an effort to raise money um, for the healthcare workers, you know, uh, in this current time that we're in. And I felt like that was a great move. Um, nice play by Diddy. And he had a lot of celebrities chip in and chime in and come in and do their little dances and stuff. You know, Diddy and his whole family, all his sons, his daughters. It was it was fun to watch. You know, you had LeBron on there with his son. Uh, you had Diddy on there calling Drake a top five artist. I feel like Diddy is in a place where he's, he's, he's wisened up, he's older, and he just, uh, he has perspective on life and just understands that it's about spreading love and like giving people their flowers because you know obviously diddy has suffered a lot of losses he's lost people that he maybe necessarily he didn't get to you know uh you know tell them how much he appreciated them you know i don't know i don't know how he feels this is just from the outside looking in you know he's lost people in his life life obviously that uh goes without saying that you know meant a lot to him so I think he has a general, like, understanding of, like, you know, we can't take this for granted. And I appreciate you and I appreciate you and I'm going to give you your flowers while I can. And that's a great sentiment that I think we all need to follow and we all need to adopt that philosophy. But uh, in the spirit of 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 all that goodness and all that love i feel like the one controversy that came out of this was uh you know diddy had um diddy had a uh, lizzo you know dancing um on his live you know lizzo came into his live and then 
she was uh, dancing and stuff like that, as everybody else did. And she started twerking. Right? And then Diddy sort of stopped the live for a second. Um, and he was saying that it was a, it's a family show and, uh, you know, I don't want to misquote him, but basically he went somewhere along the lines of like, you know, how I interpret it anyway is that, you know, it's a family show and we're not trying to do too much. Um, I don't know if he was referring to Lizzo or, you know, some people were saying that he was referring to the music that was being played at the moment. Um, and, but later on, he had Jerea, uh, you know, uh, on his live and she started dancing and she was twerking and nobody had a problem with it and nobody stopped her. Um, you know, she was dancing to, uh, I believe back that ass up, uh, by, (laughs) by Juvenile and, um, yeah, nobody stopped her. They actually looked like they was very entertained by Dre twerking. And my whole thing is this. The the internet was in an uproar because people were saying that, you know, uh, um, they were comparing how he treated Drea when she was twerking and how he treated Lizzo when she was twerking. And people were just like in an uproar like, oh, he embarrassed her. Uh, he didn't need to do that. Uh, like... You know, body shaming isn't cool. And, you know, all the keyboard warriors and and all the people came to Lizzo's defense. Well, a lot of people came to Lizzo's defense. And, um, you know, that would have been that was expected. Uh, my personal thoughts on that whole situation is, uh, I mean, Honestly, I just feel like they didn't want to see Lizzo twerk. Like, they didn't want to see Lizzo twerk. Um, me personally, I don't want to see Lizzo twerk either. Uh, you know, I wouldn't stop her from twerking. I mean, that's what she wants to do. She's entitled. Listen, I ain't going to stop people doing anything that they want to do. You entitled to do what you want to do. But, like, all I'm saying is, like, she went on his live and you know that's what she did and like you know the, i just they just didn't want to see that they just didn't want to see that that's like you know and you know people are really mad because you know drea did essentially the same thing and people are saying oh why he why didn't he um you know say st- tell drea to stop like why he didn't treat drea like that and i mean listen man drea is there for one reason like she looks good i mean like that that's her whole like drea's whole like aesthetic like lizzo is a singer she has talent she's not here because she's not famous because she dances really well lizzo is famous because uh she's a songwriter she's a singer um and she's very talented in in those areas drea isn't a songwriter isn't a singer isn't any of that stuff i don't know what drea can do i don't know if she has any real talent all i know is drea is essentially a model and she's famous because she looks good she's attractive so i mean why not let somebody who the only thing they can do is dance that's the only thing they can do is look good why not let them do what they do best? You know, like if Drea got up there and started singing, like trying to sing like, I don't know, like Whitney Houston or something like that. Like, I'm pretty sure Diddy would have stopped her or Faith Evans. Diddy would have stopped her because they would have been like, whoa, 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 Drea. We're not here for that, baby. Just dance. Am I right? They would have been like, if Drea, if Drea got up there and started singing, you know, she started singing like, I never knew there was a love like this before. If she started trying to sing some Faith Evans, I guarantee Diddy would have cut the music and be like, whoa, baby, don't do that. Stop it. That's the same thing. That's what happened to Lizzo. 
if you know you don't people listen everybody ain't for everything okay and everything ain't for everybody you know you could want to sing i like to sing i sing in the shower you know that don't mean that you know people want to necessarily hear me sing a a a slow song a ballad nobody wants to hear me on stage singing you know in the national anthem or anything like that and you know that's what it is like let's say my friend let's say i had a leak in my house let's say i had a leak in my house and my friend who i know has no skills in plumbing wants to come over and try to fix it and they're like oh yeah you could fix it right here we could just do this we could just do that and they talking all this shit and i know they don't know anything about plumbing i'm gonna tell i'm gonna be like whoa 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 bro stop it like we not here for that because they don't know what the fuck they talking about i don't want to list i don't want to listen to you talk about something that you don't know anything about but if a plumber came to my house and told me how he's going to fix the leak and where the leak is coming from, I'm down with it. Okay. But in the same aspect, you know, I would trust a pl- I would trust my friend um to play a video game with me over a plumber. You know what I mean? Like everything isn't for everybody. Um Everything is not for everybody. Um, You know, and I don't think, let me just say, I don't think it's disrespectful that Lizzo, that Diddy um, told Lizzo to to chill out because it's a family show. But he let Drea dance. At the same, it's, it's just, I feel like it's just a matter of preference. I don't, I feel like it's not mean to be honest. You know, you don't want to see that on your live. You felt like that was inappropriate content. You know, like Instagram flags some nudity, but some nudity doesn't get flagged because it's situational. They 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 analyze what the content is and it's like, okay, this is inappropriate. Okay, this is not inappropriate. And that's all it is. I feel like it's situational, like um they didn't want to see Lizzo dance Drea that's the only thing she can do is you know look good and and look good so they're not going to ask Drea to sing but they're not going to ask Lizzo to dance and that's all it is it's not body shaming I don't think it's body shaming. People always want to pull the body shaming card. Like, listen, man. Listen, man. I don't feel like you should have to accept everybody in any form. You know? If you don't like the way somebody looks, you're entitled to that. That's not judging a person. Like, you don't have to call them out on it. But it is what it is, man. He jumped on her live. I mean... She jumped on his live, and that's how he felt, so that's what he said. And he was just keeping it honest. <sighs> but it might sound ignorant. <laughs> I understand that. But at the end of the day, man, listen, everybody, everything ain't for everybody, and everybody ain't for everything. Just stick to your strengths, man. Stick to your strengths. Like, if we had a talent show, or we had a... I don't even know. I don't even know, man. If we was at a party with a bunch of celebrities, and LeBron James is there, and, and, and... and Cristiano Ronaldo is there. You're not going to ask LeBron to dribble a soccer ball. Like, you know, and and think you're about to be impressed. And you're not going to ask Cristiano Ronaldo to dribble a basketball. 
That's not what they do. I don't know if those two guys in particular can do those things. I'm just giving an example. But that's not what they do. So, in the same breath, in Diddy's mind, that just wasn't appropriate. That's just not what he wanted to see. That's not what she do. That is what she does. But for him, that's not what she do. Drea, that's all she do. So, um, that's just my opinion on that, man. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I'm really hot. I'm going to turn off the heat. But yeah, so this brings me back. This brings me to my final segment uh, that I do want to discuss. Um, and that's the NBA GOAT conversation. Now, um, I guess you can call this the, the Mount Rushmore conversation. Um, this is my personal Mount Rushmore, my personal goat talk. And I feel like for me, there's only four people that can go in the goat conversation. You know, a lot of people put a lot of people in the goat conversation and, you know, I'm a fan of a lot of players, man. I'm not a hater. Um, uh, I am a LeBron fan. If you ask me personally, that is my favorite player of all time and currently, but I'm not biased. So my GOAT list, I feel like at least three of these players on my on my Mount Rushmore. Um, you know what? We're just going to call this my Mount Rushmore. Okay. And at least three of these players on this Mount Rushmore, you can say, you can walk up to me and say, A, B, or C is the GOAT. And... There's not much I can say to argue it. Um, but all four of these guys have changed the game. And all four of these guys are players that we've never seen in the history until until them. So, um, my Mount Rushmore, I'm going to go over it. And then I'm going to go back and backtrack as to why these guys are on my Mount Rushmore. But I have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The first head. LeBron James. Second head. Um, this is in no particular order, by the way. These are just these are just the people that are on my Mount Rushmore. But I have Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I have LeBron James. I have Michael Jordan. <clears throat> and I have Steph Curry. Steph and Wardell Curry. Now I'm probably gonna get some. I'm gonna catch like some some side eyes and some heat for for including Steph in there, being that it's so premature, and you know, felt and a lot of people would probably disagree with that. But I'm gonna tell you why. For each for each person, this is my Mount Rushmore. You know, you don't have to live by what I say. So, but um, Kareem to start. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Uh, you know, greatest center of all time. He has six championships. He's the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. Um, he's won at every level. I don't know how you can argue against Kareem. He's sort of done everything. He has the MVPs to prove it. Um, he's sort of done everything. So I don't know how you can really go against Kareem being the goat. It's an easy like sell, you know. Um. And you have LeBron James, who, uh, in my eyes, is the most talented player we've ever seen and the best basketball player we've ever seen. He's still playing, um, has a lot of achievements. Um, but I feel like when it's all said and done with his career, he's going to end with a lot of records that won't be broken anytime soon. And, I, I mean, LeBron is, you know... Um, inspirational to a generation. I feel like he defined an era. As Kareem defined an era back in the day, back in the in the 80s and the 70s, Kareem defined that era of, you know, just a dominant center and you know, he was unguardable. He he made you realize like, yo, 
centers can like have skill and be finesseful. Kareem was finesseful. The sky hook was unstoppable. Um, he was unguardable, and you know he led his team to a championship multiple times. And the all-time leading scorer. So Kareem was a game changer. LeBron, a uh, uh, six-nine, two hundred and sixty-pound small forward who's the fastest guy on the court, the strongest guy on the court, and at his peak can guard all five positions um, um, and is a willing passer, is an unselfish player, will pass the ball, can score at will, but still would pass the ball first. Always makes the right basketball play, and I feel like he defined an era of, obviously, mobility for... Um, guys um sort of taking their destiny into their old own hands and and you know playing where they want to play and doing it what it is that they want to do to and putting themselves in position to make the most amount of money or to compete for a championship lebron really is the first archetype of like a story mode sort of uh player like you know he is the my player you know his trajectory, his path is, is essentially a my career sort of path where, you know, he had all these decisions that he was faced with and, you know, lived up to the hype. Oh, that hurt. Came out of high school and surpassed all expectations. Michael Jordan, um, uh, three, two three-peats, six championships, six and oh in the finals, um, you know, probably the greatest scoring player who ever lived. Uh, um, best guard who ever played. Um, and the most fierce competitor and best winner that there that there was at the time. And he was he came at a time where they wanted to make the NBA global. So um, what he did for the game and his impact is. Uh, as high as anybody's impact on any sport so you can't argue against michael jo michael jordan and um stephen curry stephen curry man um it's crazy because curry uh now he doesn't have the same accolades that the other guys do but i feel like he's changed he's revolutionized the game he turned the game into small ball essentially he's perfected his style of play is the is the perfection of what small ball can be you know uh the three-point shooting the unbelievable three-point shooting uh and just uh you know the way he plays the unselfish nature and the culture that was established with golden state um the fun that they had the joy that they play with the passing the cutting the constant movement the motion offense um and the shooting and the defending from the team the warriors were a great defensive team and steph curry uh was a great is a great leader for that team so i feel like his impact you have little kids listen you know you have a big impact when the kids today you know uh, when Kobe Bryant was playing, we Kobe had us all shooting a, tra a little paper into the trash bin and saying, Kobe, right? Steph Curry is the only other player that has come along since Kobe for people to say his name when they shoot uh, a paper ball into the trash. Something like that. A lot of kids say, Curry. It's not the same. It's not the same thing. It's not Kobe, but it exists. And that's just a testament as to the impact that Steph uh, Curry has had on the NBA with his shooting ability. And he's a one-of-a-kind player. We've never seen anybody shoot the way Steph shoots and play the way Steph plays. He's the greatest shooter of all time. LeBron James is the greatest um all-around player of all time michael jordan is the greatest winner kareem abdul jabbar is the greatest scorer kareem is the greatest scorer of all time because he scored the most points with one shot 
He had one go-to move, and it was unstoppable. And I think if he played today, it would still be unstoppable. So, you know, Kareem, Michael, LeBron, and Steph Curry. That's my Mount Rushmore. Okay. People are going to ask why I didn't include Larry Bird. I feel like uh, he's not better than any of those guys that I just mentioned. People are going to say, why didn't I include Magic Johnson? Because I feel like LeBron is a better version of Magic Johnson. Um, you know, Magic Johnson was great, but LeBron is Magic Johnson mixed with, like, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and all these other things. His athleticism and just everything else that he can do. Uh, you know, his ability just blows my, uh, Magic Johnson out of the water. People are going to ask why I didn't put Shaquille O'Neal because... No disrespect to Shaq. He's the most dominant player I've ever seen play with my own eyes. But I can't argue against what Kareem has done for the game. So I can't not say Kareem isn't the greatest center. And if he's the greatest center, then that disqualifies Shaq from this conversation. Um, And Kobe Bryant, it's the same thing kind of with Kareem and Shaq. Kobe was great, but Michael Jordan was the blueprint. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant is a lesser version of Michael Jordan. And that's no disrespect. Kobe Bryant, his whole game was essentially a Michael Jordan imitation. And he had the greatest imitation of Michael Jordan you will ever see. And, you know, he added his own flair to it, and he was his own person. But he was the closest thing to Michael Jordan. But he wasn't quite as good as Michael Jordan. Um, you know, all the numbers back that up. The eye test backs that up. Um, you know, you know, I I think it's okay to say, you know, some people might, uh, you know, get in their feelings about that. Because, you know, obviously he passed away recently. And, um, you know, people are emotional about that still. And, you know, I, I empathize with that because it was devastating to lose Kobe the way we did. But um, I'm going to be unbiased and just say Michael Jordan was a greater player than Kobe Bryant. And I don't think that's a crazy statement at all. I think most people would agree with that sentiment. But, um, yeah, um, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant is a, is a, is a, is a, is the best version of of michael jordan that anybody else has ever tried to do but he's just not quite as good as michael jordan and yeah that's the only people that i feel like would even uh make an honorable mentions list so um you know the top guys that i said are the best players to play in my opinion and you know Things could change. That's my Mount Rushmore as of today. As of right now. But, you know, I'm not a robot. My opinion can change based on, you know, events that happen, that take place, that unfold. And we'll see where, you know, LeBron and Steph Curry's careers end and see where they can stack up with uh, the the Hall of Famers of of the past. Um, yeah, but, yeah, I did want to briefly touch on something else before I get out of here. Um, but, uh, I don't think I have enough time this episode, so... I'll probably just get to, um, well, okay, I'll make it quick, actually. I just wanted to, you know, send my condolences out to uh, Carl Anthony Towns and Carl Towns Sr. Once I heard the news of his mother passing from, um, you know, uh, coronavirus complications, um, that... That was uh, really impactful because it's really sad because um, 
on a personal level, I uh, Carl Towns is from the area that I live. I'm from New Jersey. Carl Towns grew up in Piscataway. Um, I grew up in Perth Amboy. So, uh, and I played basketball in high school and Carl Towns father, you know, see, I call him Carl Towns, the Anthony, he added the Anthony like professionally, but you know, he was just Carl Towns back in the day, back when I was growing up. But, um, his dad is Carl Towns senior and he, uh, was actually a coach that, uh, coached against my high school team. You know, we were, our teams were division, um, rivals. And so I got to know Carl Towns' dad. I also played on his AAU team for maybe a game or two. Um, or maybe, what well, I forgot what it was. Maybe like one tournament. I played with Carl Towns' dad. I played for him. I played for his dad. He coached me. And I also played against him in high school, played against his team in high school. And um, I'm older than Carl Towns. When I was a senior in high school, I don't he might have been like in seventh grade or something like that. Um, uh, I just remember uh, seeing Carl Anthony Towns um, as a seventh grader when I was in high school. You know, he was a little chunky kid. You know, he was just running around on the sideline and, you know, with his basketball and he was shooting around after the game and you know uh uh i didn't think that he would be the player that he is today and you know it uh, you know um you know not a perfect player but a very good player and i didn't think that he would get to that point so i didn't see that coming until he got to the high school he started he got a growth spurt he got bigger got stronger and i started hearing big things about him but like when he was when i was in high school and he was younger you know, he was just running around up under his dad all the time and, you know, never thought he would get to the point that he's at. And, you know, I'm pr I'm proud to see him like that, like where he is today. And I know his dad personally. So uh, his dad always used to call me lefty because, you know, um, I'm left handed. I'm a left handed basketball player. And that was my identifier for him. He would be like, oh, look at what's up, lefty What's going on, lefty. And, um, yeah, man, so it's really unfortunate to hear about what happened to, uh, his mother and Carl Town Sr.'s wife and, uh, you know, you know, my heart goes out to them because I know that, you know, I can't imagine what that feels like for them, but, um, yeah, man, um, Hopefully they can bounce back from that. Uh, you know, this situation has affected a lot of lives. And uh, I just hope that everybody can just come out of this stronger and, you know, get back on their feet and keep progressing with life. And um, hopefully this won't derail, you know, uh, you know, too many other things or derail us for too much longer. You know, I want this to end and just unfortunate that people are going through uh, this situation um, with health problems and 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 just, you know, just encourage. I encourage everybody to just follow the guidelines and just stay safe and just, uh, you know, appreciate the time that you get to spend with your loved ones and just have a good time and don't stress so much. Have fun, but don't stress yourself. So, yeah, but, um, yeah, man, uh, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, like I said, this is my first episode, the first of many, I hope, and I will hope to see you guys, uh, soon. Let me know in the comment section, um, you know, just comment, whatever, whatever, like, you know, let me know, um, if you like my goat list. I'm sorry. Let me know if you like my NBA GOAT list. Tell me your GOAT list down below. Or, um, you know, tell me about your favorite Instagram live moment with all this, with all the celebrities and what they're doing. Tell me uh, your favorite moment, you know. Um, and stay safe, everybody.